On your mark, get set. We're riding on the internet, cyberspace set free. Hello, virtual reality. Interactive appetite, searching for a website, a window to the world, got to get online. Take a spin, now you're in with the techno set. You're going surfing on the internet. Hi there, friends. This is Riley Kilo, and today we're going to be focusing on scams in kink and queer spaces and the epidemic of fake accounts exploiting our communities. First, we'll discuss critical thinking and give you the tools to protect yourself in any situation, and then we'll get down to the various tactics you may have not predicted. And this is not about low quality or abusive doms. See my video on Mommy Cat Marie for more on that. This is about actual fake accounts that take money but do not deliver any sort of content or experience. So let's get the basics out of the way. Don't send money to people you don't know. Don't click suspicious links and only use trusted apps. Don't send intimate photos to strangers. Fake profiles and stolen or AI generated pictures are common, much more on that later. Always use two-factor authentication for everything and create a secondary anonymous email for naughty stuff and for kinky communications. And lastly, don't believe everything you read on the internet. I'm very sorry, but those horny singles in your neighborhood aren't real. They're just ads based on your location. I'll give you a moment before we move on. So the way the scam operates is people will create an account on social media, often using stolen or more recently AI generated images, and their profile will tell the story of an established dom, often gaining followers by retweeting or engaging with potential victims or through other bots and scam accounts. They try to establish a relationship by attracting people through content or contacting folks directly. I get dozens of unsolicited DMs from horny dudes a day. There's lots of naive guys out there looking for any kind of interaction, letting lust guide them, making themselves easy prey. In addition to that, there are a lot of vulnerable folks in our communities that don't really understand how the internet or in many ways communication work, and you better believe that the scam artists target them first. They bait people with chatting and more content, again, usually stolen or fake, and eventually get around to asking for money, gift cards, or information. Be it part of a false plan to meet, or crisis situation, or blackmail and extortion situation, the bottom line is getting something out of you, and they're targeting kinky people specifically because of the stigma around it. I've seen a number of common threads throughout these scam artists, such as I'm starting a business, or I'm setting up a nursery, and of course that never manifests, or I can't send you pictures because I need to buy a webcam, and when you buy them, a webcam they ghost, and uh, there's a lot of these people just trying to get your money, so don't be surprised if they are willing to lie about anything, up to and including abusive situations or sick animals and stuff like that, so just be very, very cautious. So how do we overcome this? We do that by searching for certain red flags. The bane of all scams is the potential victim viewing the situation critically and objectively. If you were to imagine describing this conversation or relationship to a cop or to your mom, would it sound like you got played? So here's a list of red flags, and not everyone with these traits is a scammer, but every scammer has these traits. You never can be too careful. So when looking at this person's account, do they behave like a real person with real interests, or does it look like a hashtag engagement account? Is every retweet and post similar or promoting similar accounts? Are they following more people than they have following them? Do you share any followers with them? How much AI art is in their profile? Check out their likes and media page. See how consistent they are. Are they posting any gear or events or just photos of themselves in non-kink situations? Have they always used the same photos? Did the conversation become hot and heavy quickly? Are they depending on you, a stranger, to solve a crisis? Are they promising recompense tomorrow for a gift card today? So keep an eye out for these red flags. Be observant and patient. I honestly believe the most important skill in our society is finding information online and being able to determine what's real and what's fake. Though I must say it is much trickier to tell what's real and what's not these days, which brings us to our next topic. Take a spin, now you're in with the techno set. You're going surfing on the internet. So I am not an expert on this sort of thing, but let me try to explain AI people really quickly. So what people are doing is they're telling a computer to create an image using other people's facial features and stuff and creating a fresh image that doesn't exist. So all the people you're seeing here are, are fake. 
Um, and so it's a good way for people to make it seem like they're a real person, be it um, you know creating an account to push political rhetoric or just faking who they are um, using this image. And it is very common and computers are getting really good at detecting this sort of thing. But the average person, it's indistinguishable from a real human being. So deepfakes aren't quite the same as AI images in the sense that they are taking somebody else's image or a fake image and applying it onto somebody else's body. So um, oftentimes you'll see them done satirically on TV shows and stuff, but it's something we need to be really careful about as this technology gets in the hand of consumers and people can just take any sort of video of my videos or whatever and create deepfakes of them. So it's really harmful and you're starting to see it all over the place. Now, I see people putting an AI head on their own body and stuff, and as long as you're honest about it, you know, express yourself however you want, but it's when you're trying to convince people that that is really you that it becomes a problem because then you're catfishing people and you're, you're expressing yourself inauthentically. So, you know, have fun, just be honest. And please don't put children's heads on adult bodies. I've seen that several times and it's absolutely disgusting, and that's the kind of dark, deep rabbit hole we're starting to go down with this AI stuff. As a parent, I've never been happier than when my children ask their friends over for an internet computer party. I'd like to add a word about safety, though. So, now more than ever, a scammer or bot can imitate faces and human-like dialogue, but they can't imitate a history, a real conversation, or a unique personality. My best tool for vetting people is a short phone conversation. You can often tell if somebody's using a fake voice, and while you can fake video and Photoshop yourself, scammers, especially non-American ones, will have a hell of a time with a phone call. If they say they don't want to give out their phone number, have them record a vocaroo or speak over Discord or Skype. If they say they're too nervous to have a conversation, that's fine. I just wouldn't give that person money until I was more comfortable that they were a real person. If you send an intimate pic to somebody like that without knowing what's up, it's very possible they will use that photo as some kind of leverage. There's lots of cringe sites and people that like to take advantage of people's private information in any way possible. My bestie and I talk like every day and once she sent me an unfamiliar link on Twitter overnight saying check this out and before I clicked that link I confirmed she had sent it to me. It only took two seconds but accounts get compromised like this all the time and it takes constant vigilance to stay safe. Don't be a farmer on the battlefield. Arm yourself with skepticism and never act frivolously online. I also advise creating a separate email account for social and kinky interactions, separate from the one you bank with. A scam artist can learn a lot from an email. If you have a TikTok with contacts enabled, other sites are kind of like this too, they can see your profile and see what you're doing on TikTok. You should dox yourself. Search your name occasionally, look at your profiles through incognito tabs to see what other people are seeing. Check your privacy settings all the time. They constantly change. Or failing all of that, throw your phone into a lake. You have to remember the internet is not a regulated environment, so the quality and accuracy of various informational offerings can differ quite a bit. There may even be a concern if your children should access some of them. I believe scammers are so common in our community due to the underground status of kink and the supply and demand and role gender gap. So you have a lot of people looking for mommies and not a lot of mommies. So these scammers like to fill that role in hopes that they will deceive people into thinking they found something really wonderful and special when in fact they are just getting ripped off. But I also feel the acceptance of stolen content in kink communities is responsible as well. How often do you see things like pasties or captions and things like that use non-consenting images with no care for the people they're stealing from and putting into porn? I think we need a referendum on that garbage ASAP, but that's about our next video. I have so much more to say and I'm sure new things will be popping up, so I wanted to keep this short and sweet. We'll be covering charity scams and non-consenting content in the future, and you can find the full transcript on my site, Stay Diaper. We won't let these folks turn our hearts cold. The best way to find a mommy is to be the best you. Follow legit mommies. There are tons of them, tons of wonderful, wonderful mommies in this community. And keep an eye on personal sites and pet life, etc. People are always looking and there's lots of good people out there, both professional and non-professional. And personally, I think it's okay to be single. There's a lot of pressures on long-term relationships in this society. And frankly, it's not always better to have loved and lost if you loved a fraud and lost a bunch of money. So. 
Keep your dukes up, friends. All day, every day. We're all in the big city now, and we all have to watch our backs and watch each other's backs. Be the smart skeptic. Don't believe everything you read online, and don't believe stuff just because it feels good. And most of all, don't use your credit card when you're really horny, unless you're on one of my sites. Thanks and be well, constant vigilance. Stay safe and stay kinky, friends. Bye. I don't know. What do you think, kids? Yeah! Surf's up! See you on the net! <laughs> <laughs>